Trying to be productive is stopping you from enjoying life. Now recently I just watched Dan Coe's new video about how people think he's unhappy. Do you feel unhappy? I mean, I don't think so, but when people tell you something over and over again, you start to believe that it's true. I was scripting this video and I thought, you know, how can I just leverage, how can I just use Dan Coe's name so that I can get you to click on this? Now before you click away, <laughs> I'm actually gonna deliver productivity simply isn't happiness. You know, you watch somebody who is very successful and you think, oh, you know, I want I want to be like him. I'm gonna follow in his footsteps. And you know, if once I achieve X, Y, Z, then I'm gonna be happy. So we try to do everything we can to be as productive as we can, only to find ourselves in a conundrum where we don't quite feel like we're enjoying our lives in the pursuit of success, but we feel like we are we are trying to escape our lives in the pursuit of success. And that's really what I'm trying to get at here. You know, a lot of us, especially if we're younger, it doesn't matter our age really, it's anyone can fall into this trap where trying to be productive is stopping you from enjoying life. Basically, we have this misconception, this fallacy that being productive will lead us to happiness. And that's true but we don't realize that it's not pr productivity itself that brings us happiness. But the problem is that we get so caught up in trying to be productive that we forget why we wanted to be productive in the first place. You know, we want to be productive so we can become successful. We want to become successful so we can fundamentally <laughs> enjoy our lives. But it becomes a trap because we forget how to enjoy life in this present moment and everything we do becomes a means to an end to escape the present moment. Productivity done unconsciously creates suffering. And I would argue this is the greatest source of suffering is when you're not present. And trying to be productive can be a very sneaky way of tricking you into thinking that, oh, you know, once I reach there, I'll feel good. I'll give myself permission but we quickly forget that when our mind is driven to productivity based on fears of the past, you know, maybe we were bullied. Maybe we, our parents never made us feel adequate about ourselves. Maybe we never got the, the validation that we needed, right? So we're trying to prove ourselves by being productive, by trying to achieve things. But once we realize that our drive to be driven a lot of the times can, do, can be fueled by drama. We realize it's like, why have I been unhappy this whole time even though my whole pursuit is for happiness? Well, the issue is that we're trying to chase happiness. When you chase happiness, that means you're sad. Right? What does a needy person try to do to get a relationship? They chase the relationship. When you chase the relationship, by default, that makes you needy of a relationship and the person you're chasing obviously is running. So it's this, it's this paradoxical concept of when you don't chase what you want, you can have it. Now, I don't want to mistake this for passive, pass, complete passivity because it's not. And this is where really the Eastern conception and the Western conception of flow state really begins to differ. Because in the Western conception of the flow state, it's perceived as this like 90 minute time block where you're in peak focus and 10x productivity. And that, that's the modern, you know, neuroscience definition of flow if you've watched those flow state videos. And while that's not wrong, it's also missing a bigger picture. In the Eastern philosophies of Taoism, there's this concept of flow. And it's akin to being in tune with what's called the way, the Tao, which is the foundation of Taoism. The Tao, when you are in, when you are following the way, you're like water. You mold to whatever shape that is presented. Whatever blockade, whatever barrier that's presented in front of you 
Water doesn't try to hit against a brick wall. Water f always flows around it. Water is the most adaptable element or material substance there is simply because it can do that. And this is why Bruce Lee said, be like water, my friend, because you're not trying to be this you're not trying to fight the world, right? You're, you're not trying to, I have to be productive, you know, because the, you're going against a brick wall. What happens when you feel like shit? Do you still force yourself to, to be like, I have to be productive? That's not sustainable. You see, it causes a lot of mental conflict inside of you. But when you are able to flow like water and adapt to the present moment in however way it presents itself to you, you are by definition in the state of flow. You're flowing with it. And from this state, you're fully present and fully grounded in this moment where there's nothing else you need, you need to be doing. There's no other place you need to go. You know, we, we think of you know, we got to work, 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 so we can finally make it to our vacation. That's the definition of a rat race. You know, if you're trying to build your online business, isn't that what you're trying to escape? Right? So productivity can become this disguise for trying to escape the present. Because you're so busy thinking about the future. You're so busy thinking about the future and, and how you're not getting there fast enough. Or you're driven by the past and how you were never, you never, you're never good enough. You know, you want to prove that you are good enough, right? Driven by the past, you know, worried about the future. But you're never here. You're never grounded in the here and now because you are not tapped into that, that energy of, of flow, of, of water fundamentally. And this is where the Eastern really... Um, branches off from the Western is the Western just conceives flow uh, flow state. It, it conceives it as a as a, a limited state of mind that you do th in, in a day, you know, in that time block. But really, the Eastern conception of it is that flow becomes your whole life. And Danko, in that unhappiness video, really illustrates that because he's grounded in in himself. And when we're not grounded in, our, in ourselves, we project that ungroundedness onto other people and think, you know, oh, you know, he's successful, but, you know, he never smiles. Why isn't he happy? Well, maybe he's so comfortable in, in himself that he doesn't need to smile at you. You know what I mean? We all have our different dispositions and personalities, and it's okay to be who we are. You know, I'm not the most charismatic person. But once I accepted that, I realized I could just say whatever I want to say and <laughs> that's that, you know. I used to beat myself up for like, you know, why aren't you confident enough? Why aren't you charismatic enough? You know, why aren't you productive enough? Why aren't you fit enough? Why aren't you attractive enough? Now, I'm not saying to, to not improve yourself, but ca like at, at, at a certain threshold, there, there's your self-talk can become quite toxic. And this is where I think mainstream self-development has a problem because you're trying to improve yourself, but you fundamentally still do not like yourself, right? Isn't the whole goal of self-development is to improve your life so that you can live a better life and feel better. But it's so funny that we forget the, the purpose of it originally. And then we get so caught up in the habits, so caught up in the productivity, so caught up in the discipline that we forget, why did I start this in the first place? You also start to realize your relationship to productivity is just another relationship. So is your relationship to your phone. So is your relationship to your car. So is your relationship to your girlfriend. So is your relationship to your parents. So is your relationship to your country. So is your relationship to books. Everything in life is a relationship. And 
what I'm just trying to say here is if you're not careful with your relationships to productivity, to happiness, to inner peace, then you begin to chase it. And when you chase it, you give, you're literally outsourcing your energy. Your energy is within, but you are now focused on, on leaking it outwards. Right? When we are grounded in ourselves, we contain that energy and we let that ener more energy flow to us. Be careful what's driving your behaviors because without self awareness, a seemingly virtuous behavior suddenly isn't so virtuous when you finally shine light on it. So I'll leave you with that. Like and subscribe. See you in the next one. Peace.